This video was brought to you by my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. Hello there. Yeah, now I have a camera. Actually, it's a beating camera because I have a new computer, my first ever laptop. So, without further ado, let's get to the topic. Today we will talk about the decorative pattern, a very interesting pattern because it's hard to see its actual value until you realize that once you have the setup, you can go wild and do a lot of other stuff. So let's get started. I already made a setup and please note that this is not a tutorial, I, I am sharing my studies with you so don't follow this strictly because I actually made some very poor implementations but the real thing here is that you get how this pattern works okay so try to understand how you can make the setup for this pattern and just take off everything poor that I did here but before we get into this setup that I made here let's try to understand uh, what this pattern actually do and what it try to, to achieve What's the problem that it tries to solve? So I will switch to my books here. Uh, th these books will be, will be uh, on the description and on the Pinet comment, so you can have access to them. Actually, the, the one in the left is uh, an upgrade of the one in the right, so you can have access to the one in the left instead. But anyway, so the decorator pattern is a structural pattern that lets you attach new behaviors to objects by placing these objects inside special wrappers, objects that contain the behaviors. This is very, very cool. Because uh, as you can see, we have a, I think that is a matriarcha uh, doll. I don't know how to call it in English, but this is basically how the, the decorative pattern works. You have something and then you wrap it with other thing. And you see that since the decorative pattern is what it is wrapping, so uh, if you, you are wrapping a node, the decorator will also be a node. So you can also wrap a decorator. You can have a decorator wrapping a decorator, wrapping a decorator and so on. So uh, on the right, you can try to understand the problem that we are trying to solve with this pattern. You want to add behaviors or state to individual objects at runtime. So notice that uh, we are not switching as we do with the strategy pattern, we are adding or changing the, the behavior of the object in runtime. And inheritance is not feasible because it's, it, it is static and you add it to an entire class. So everyone inheriting from this class will also have this new behavior. So if you want to extend it, you will have uh, to extend a lot of other objects together with it. Uh, while with a decorator you can have one object, another object with the same uh, that inherits the same thing, but you want this one at some point of the uh, running of the software, you want this one to have another behavior, you want to improve it, upgrade it somehow. So you unwrap it with another object, with a decorator, and you have uh, a new behavior only on these objects, only on this instance of the class and the other one will keep the, the original behavior. So, let's go back to Godot and try to understand how I implemented it. So first, let me change this uh, layout here because you cannot see what's uh, on the bottom here. So, change it. Uh, and let me open the script here. So, uh, let's start by understanding what is uh, what I'm trying to achieve here. I'll play the game and you see that uh, Let's suppose that this is a character, and this character has some attributes, so it has strength, agility, and intelligence, and it also has some skills. It can bless or curse itself or others, so it can bless or curse a target, and when we bless, we get an, improving, an improvement on this status, and when we curse, we have some uh, debuff, so we have a buff and a debuff. And you can see that we always go back to the original value. So the curse go back, goes back to the original value. The blast goes back to the original value. And uh, this is it. It's basically just a buff and debuff system. A, you can say that it's a power up system somehow. So I will close it here. And let's try to understand how this was done. 
So, uh, first of all, I have here an attribute class, an attribute node, per, uh, let's say that. Uh, and this attribute node has just a, a amount, so an amount of string, or an amount of agility, or intelligence. And when we set this amount, we emit a signal, and when we get this amount, and uh, pay attention to this method, the get amount, because this is what we will, will use in the decorator. So we have this get amount. We are uh, encapsulating the amount variable inside these two methods here. Okay. Uh, also, let me know if you would like to have a series about the four pillars of object-oriented uh, design. So polymorphism, encapsulation, inheritance, and abstraction. Let me know if you want to to get something about this. Uh, comment below. But anyway. Uh, after this, after the, the attribute, we have the attribute decorator. And the attribute decorator, as you can see, it inherits from attribute. So, as I said, it is what it wraps. So, uh, you, if, you, if we are wrapping a, an attribute, we will be an attribute as well. And the, the, the very interesting thing about this pattern is that it is what it wraps. So it is something and it has the same thing. So it is an attribute and it has an attribute. In this case, I call this the decorate T. So we have the decorator and the decorate T. And this decorate T will be the attribute. It has to be an attribute. And notice that I use polymorphism to overwrite the, the get amount method. So instead of just uh, return the amount that we have here in this specific decorator we will try to get the amount of the decorate T and we will decorate it so we will, we will make it um, fancier let's say that way so we have this amount here and then we multiply this by this amount so we have the decorate T status so let's say we have 10 strength and when we decorate it with this de specific decorator, we will multiply this strength by something that is the decorator amount. So if the, the strength is 10 and the decorator is 1.5, we will improve the strength by 50%. Okay? And then we, uh, I just add this line so we don't go below zero because it's not realistic to have negative strength <laughs> and uh, here we return this decorated amount so we take the, the decorate t amount we decorate this and we return the decorated amount so notice that we have something here we wrap it and we return we, we go down into this um, onion structure and then we take what is inside it and we pass through uh, some uh, operations some calculations here because we are decorating this uh, thing that is on the core of this onion structure. So we can also have a decorator, another decorator wrapping this new decorator. Yeah. The, this base decorator. And we can go inside this onion structure until we, we reach what is the actual base um, thing that is being decorated. And then we go back to whoever is asking for this value and we pass through these operations. So uh, this is basically what is done here into the um, into this example. So if we go back here to the game, uh, we have the bless and the curse. They are basically the same thing. So if I open the the script here, they will be they will point to the the same script, and we we'll apply this buff to a target, and we can pass the attribute that should be uh, applied. And when we buff it, we will go to we will take a decorator. So uh, if I go here. We have a decorator here that is basically the effect of this skill. And we go here and we will take the decorator and create an instance of it. And then we will set this decorator, we will inject into this decorator the attribute of the target that we are trying to decorate. So uh, we will get this attribute here. Uh, actually, we will get this attribute here. So we are going to the target and we are getting a property that is this attribute that we're trying to get here and then on the decorator amount we will set it to be the the multiplier of this skill 
So if you see here, we have a duration, that will be the duration of this buff, of this power up, you can say. And then we have the attribute multiplier, that will be what will be used to improve the status. After that, we set this attribute, and this is the most important thing, actually. Uh, let me emphasize this. Wherever uh, the decorate T is, you have to inject the decorator instead. So uh, in this case, we uh, let me show you the attribute here. The attribute has the a pointer to the strength, a pointer, a pointer to the agility, and a pointer to the intelligence. So when we decorate these objects, when we decorate these uh, attributes, we have to inject the decorator inside these variables here. So uh, it can point out to the decorator instead of the decorate. This is the, the, the most painful part to do because you have to find a way to inject the decorator inside everywhere that the decorate is being pointed to. And then when you have uh, when you want to take out this decorator, you have to find a way to go back. You have to inject back the, the decorate in these variables. So if you don't have a base structure to do this uh, easily, you will have some a uh, bad time trying to implement this pattern. In my case, I have I, I inject these variables into this buff and I inject the the decorate back into this remove method here so I'm just setting back and since the the decorate T the decorator also points to the decorate T we always have access to it so we always have access to the the base value so when we want to uh, remove the decorator we can basically just say okay whatever decorate T this is pointing to uh, will now be injected injected back into its original uh, pointer so this is what this is doing here and if we try to test this uh, let me put this into the remote so uh, to the remote scene open this open this open this and this uh, what we will see is that it will uh, instantiate some uh, decorators inside this blast uh, class here inside this blast node so when I bless it we will have some children here uh, let me bless again we'll have some children decorators here and when they the the status uh, the buff goes out so when the buff times out it will inject the decorators uh, it will inject the decorators back into these attributes here to these attributes node because this is what is being used to carry and to reference what's the value of the, the the status of the attributes of the character well if we go here into the decorator uh, this might sound trivial so you could do this just by uh, making some calculations some hard-coded calculations but now that you have this into your into your tool shell into your toolbox uh, imagine the possibilities of this kind of system so imagine that instead of having uh, just some multiplications you can have any kind of decoration in, in these uh, nodes and you don't have to actually just work with integers you don't have to work with numbers you can work with any kind of value so let's say that you have a skill system and somehow a character can forge some weapons and then you can say okay so these weapons will also uh, decorate this, the, the character's status. So this, um, these weapons will have a modifier inside of it that will be a decorator. And when the character equip these weapons, it will basically do the same thing as uh, I'm doing here into the skill. But instead of passing just these, it will pass, let's say, just strength or just agility or just intelligence. So if you have a knife, it will improve the character agility. If you have a staff, it will improve the character intelligence and so on and so forth. And with this, you can also improve the way the character forges the weapon. So let's say you have a, a system for forging and on the level one, it always returns a basic weapon. But at some point you, you can have a improved skill or a perk or something like this that says, okay, every weapon that you forge 
will also have a, a modifier something like this instead of having uh, a returning weapon so you have uh, let's say this would be a uh, forging system and you go here and you have some method that returns a weapon here so forge something like forge um, a weapon and it would uh, search in a database or something and then it will return a weapon here but on the decorator you will have something like uh, instead of returning this weapon you will return this weapon that we just uh, tried to that we just find with uh, a modifier inside of it so you can use these decorations everywhere in your game and this is very cool because this makes so that your game adapts dynamically you make emerging mechanics inside your game uh, this is so well uh, this is it tell me what other systems that you are designing that maybe the decorator pattern can solve your problems and well don't forget to leave a thumbs up oops <laughs> to leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this kind of content so i know that you are actually enjoying also don't forget to subscribe below and turn on the notifications so you can get notified when i release more of this kind of content and if you want to get more on game development content and get some exclusive perks and rewards you can become one of my patrons so go there check it out the tiers we have some very cool rewards and perks so pick one tier and become one of my beloved supporters. So this is it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time.